Right guys, so this brings up to another video on Oracle database which is running on the version 21c. Now what we are going to discuss is not about the container database or the pluggable database. It's about how do you create the user within the container database and within the pluggable database. So why container and why pluggable? That's something that we will anyways deal with in the later part of the tutorial. But now we are just going to deal with what is container, uh, how do we create a user and drop the user in container database? How do we create the user and drop the user in the pluggable database? That's all it is. Okay, so pretty cool with that. The version that I'm running right now is 21C. Okay, so 21C, cool. So in the command prompt, not in the command prompt, run in the Windows run button, you can say SQL plus, okay, I'm just going to open that. And I'm going to connect with system and I'm going to say password admin123. Now, <clears throat> the moment if I say show connection underscore name, as you can see right now, I'm in container database, as you can see here, CDB. Ta -da. Okay, I need to shift it to pluggable. I'll tell you how to do that. Now, first, what you're going to do, you're going to create the user. Okay, if I say create, uh, I'm just bored to type the command, uh, type it the command. I'm just going to take it from my notepad what I've created. See here, I'll just take this and I paste it. Okay, create user. I'll say uh, Oracle ORC, ORC USR 01. Now, if I say, if I enter, obviously it says that invalid common user or role name. See this, this guy. Okay. It just means that if you are working in a container database, make sure that you add something like this, C hash hash, and C, the C that I write, I've written over here, denotes the container database. See, now the user has been created. Now if I say select star from all underscore users, now if you can see here, here you have the user. Okay, I just ignore the above one. See, there are totally 39 users so far identified and there are many users if you can see here uh, like d v f l b a c s y s and let's scroll up a little bit here and as you can see you have many users here one two see here and each of them are are having the default users created okay now we'll go back here um, sorry, mm, we'll go back here. Okay, now let's scroll a little bit up. Okay, I just want to show you certain default users here. Uh, sys, and then you have auth sys, system, and you remember I've just logged in via system. Okay, now with that being said, there are a total of 39. Okay, uh, come on. Okay, now this is a custom user that I had created long back. So if you want to drop the user, you can say drop user take this copy paste it and say cascade cascade and that's it the user will be dropped and if I say select star now the count should be 38 see here 38 the user have been dropped off now obviously once the user is created you need to give the permission to user that hey I'm going to give the permission to this user by enabling a session you're saying that I'll give a session access I am going to give a session access to you and with the help of a session access you can able to log in to the to that particular user okay so to give the session let's take this grant create session see grant create session let me copy this copy this and this is the uh, let me get this yeah so you can see this is the um, syntax grant create session and give this username that's it whichever user you are intending to give the session and give the session okay cool see grant has been succeeded now with this user which is in the container database you can log in so just log into command prompt and take this syntax okay uh, the syntax would be just I'll show that we're going to say SQL plus this is a username this is a password at the rate at the rate 000 this is nothing but your local host 
see in this local host this is this is my machine in this my in this machine where i have installed my database right if you have installed in a different server then this ip address would be different obviously right since i have installed in my local machine obviously i would have given as 0.0.0.0 and the port obviously the port and here right so here is the thing here i have given as xepdb1 now what is this now this is a pluggable database this is a pluggable database now first before getting into this pluggable database let's create a user in the pluggable database and see how we can log in now obviously if i give this username and try to log the, if i give this option and try to log in with this it kind of doesn't work out okay so let me show that anyways here i'll take this username okay and i'm going to paste it over here okay paste it over here okay uh, just let me check the password yeah, it's admin 123 it's admin 123 0.0.0 at the rate of localhost port is 1521 i'm going to give as this obviously this is not correct this is not correct because it's not a pluggable database so just let me exit this out okay i'm sorry just let me exit it out right seems i have exited out the whole window okay cool um i think i've done a mistake okay see here um you are not able to connect with this particular syntax because you are using xepdb1 okay now let me bring up the command prompt again and see this what i'm going to do and i'm going to re remove this xepdb1 remember by default it is container database if it's a container database you don't need to explicitly say slash container database okay i'm going to take this okay paste it over here again password and rest of them remains the same okay now can you see this it has been connected because i have removed this xepdb1 because there is no need there is no need to give the container database because obviously by default it is connected to container now here is the thing now now we are going to shift from container to pluggable okay we are going to shift from container to pluggable let's go back to this guy and we are going to say alter see again let's say show connection underscore name we are in container database now we are going to alter alter this session set container equal to xepdb1 by the way how do i know this is my pluggable database once again let me show that i'm going to say show pluggable databases okay okay show pdbs okay i think the one of the reason why you can't see this is because uh of the sysdb access that's quite natural it's not a, it's not a problem you can just say you can again log in as connect as sysdba okay so maybe this can show us pdbs let's see this yeah see it's only because the previous user does not have the access to show a sysdba i just connected to a sysdba and uh, i've used show pluggable databases now let me alter this session alter session set container is equal to xepdb1 now let's see show connection underscore name as you can see right now we are in xepdb1 now i'm going to of course let, let me select the user select star from all users and yeah see obviously you have the one that i've created right now okay now i'm going to create another user okay in pluggable database what i'm going to do i'm going to take this take this uh, user uh, syntax paste it come on paste it and i'm going to say the user called web m user web m user and admin 123 now can you see this it has created initially we had to give as c hash hash in container database but in pluggable database you don't need to give c hash hash it has automatically picked it up now obviously you have to grant the session take this grant session to web user you have granted the session that's awesome then let's try to connect again here um 
okay let's take, let's exit from the sql and here i'm going to say grant session okay webm user okay so i'm going to say here it as like this webm user admin 123 at the rate of localhost port is 5521 and i'm going to say xepdb1 can you see this now with the help of xepdb1 it is connected to this version okay so that's how you create the pluggable database create user in pluggable database and create user in the container database obviously we have also seen how to drop the user and it's it's quite not that difficult if you have to drop a user say again drop user username say webm user and say cascade that's it now here's the stuff i don't want to do that at this stage now i've given the permission to session in a similar way what all permissions do we have so here we have permission we have we have privileges we can grant with connect user privilege uh, privileges we can give unlimited table spaces we can give create view create procedures create sequence create trigger we can give permission to alter any table alter any procedure alter any trigger we can give permission to delete drop so many stuff of all those things what i'll say i'm going to use this command i'm going to say grant all privileges say boss I'm going to give you all the privileges. Do hell whatever you want with that. I'm going to say grant all privileges to uh, where I'm in right now. Sorry, I should be in SQL plus. Grant all privileges to. Let me copy this again. I should be in SQL plus, and I'll say grant all privileges to webm user. Okay, I'm sorry. I have removed this quotes. Webm user. See, I've given all the permission all the privileges now webm as user is become kind of become like a super system dba superman kind of thing okay <laughs> cool so webm user has been created now it's time to test in our sql developer i just want to bring up sql developer okay it's another software that will help you to connect to the data process just want to check that before you kind of wind up the session okay and one more thing i'm just going to say select all select star from all underscore users okay so you have uh, c oracle user from container database and webm user from pluggable database okay so just let me exit this exit and exit okay so where is sql developer should i have opened by now no so just let me open it up again oh, sorry not this one so sql developer okay there you go it's kind of opening up up okay there you go it has opened up okay now let's go back here and select the plus icon and here the first thing that i'm going to test is our system user okay the Oracle database system user. Okay. The password is admin123. Okay. And I'm going to test with the service name xepdb1. That's a pluggable database test. As you can see, it's success. Save it. Now I'm going to test with our uh, webm user. Okay. Copy it. So webm user. I'm going to say webm user. And the password remains the same. Okay. And it's a pluggable database i'm going to say connect test before that test as you can see success i'm going to save the password i'm going to save the connection okay and here also i'm going to save the password just before i don't forget it okay because i'm getting old okay save just want to override it that's okay and this is webm user as you can see it is webm user this is a username and the password and this is a local host as we as we had seen it right 0.0.0, .0 and the port and the pluggable database we are given slash remember that syntax that syntax is getting translated here that's all it is see in the syntax what we had given we had said sql plus 
SQL plus and then username and password username and password and then at the rate of these two things okay not sorry, not these two these two yeah at the rate of localhost and 1521 slash and finally we had given this guy over here remember that is exactly what we are seeing right now okay that's that's how let's connect it and uh, yeah there you go it has been connected successfully cool okay now let's go back and check with this guy c hash user um, c hash user let's see what happens okay and same let us test obviously see it's a failure because it is not a pluggable database remember it's not a pluggable database okay and uh, since it's not a pluggable database okay let me see if this works see it's it should be in the uh, global name now what is a global name see i'll tell you if i go back here and say select star from global uh, underscore name oh, see now right now this is an xcp db1 now, if i try to exit out of it then reopen sql plus and i'm going to say connect as this DBA here select star from uh, global underscore name. Can you see it? The global name is XE. XE is here. Since this C hash, which is a container based, is connected to the global database, that's the reason the service identifier SID service identifier should be in xe because we have connected through container database and we have worked it out all right guys so this is how you create the user and obviously i forgot to give the permission to this guy i'm going to say grant all privileges to our c hash user come on copy paste to it would be unfair if i don't give a complete um, access to it correct so all the privileges have been given to this guy as well now cool with that being said okay so let's let me connect it test it one more time save it um okay this is not acceptable c hash user okay save it that's it connect as you can see i'm able to connect to this as well cool with that being said we are done with this part of the video and uh, this tutorial talks about the user creation, user deletion, grant the user permission with the help of Oracle Database 21C. Cool. I hope you have learned something. Yeah. Okay. That's it for this video and see you guys in the next tutorials. Until then, take care. Peace.